The following is a Cast Wave Studios production. Jedi Amanda with Beyond the Game, and today I'm here with Harley Likes Music. Hey, hey! So, I heard this was your first MAGFest. Uh, this is my first MAGFest, yeah. I've, I've heard a lot about it. Um, my friends post about it every year, a lot of friends from like, Chiptune guys from the States. Um, and it always looks very exciting, so I'm glad that I've been yeah, given this invite to come over and play. So, where are you from originally? Uh, Sheffield in the UK. Oh, cool, okay. Man, that flight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we was yeah pretty tired. We, we like got down to London, um, kind of like rested up for the night, and then just flew in the morning. So it was like it wasn't too stressful, but uh, yeah, still a long flight. Do you have like other tour dates in the states, like to keep doing? Yeah, I'm gonna be doing a show in uh, in New York on Thursday as well. Oh my gosh! Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I was like, <laughs> I, I'm going to New York. Like, I really want to have a show there. Luckily, the like. I think in the last week I managed to organise one with a, a guy just in Long, um, with his like arcade arcade group. So. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for that. Now, can I ask when you like do shows? Do you like do you have your own agent? Are you like top tier now, and you got people to do the stuff for you? No, not at all. Like this is, I, I always say that chip tune is like uh, a hobby that's just escalated like out of control. Like, I, I, I work as a, um, a support worker back at home, so working with adults that have learning disabilities. Oh, no way! Uh, this, is just, this is just like a hobby for okay. me. That, uh, it gives me the opportunity to travel, so it's, um, yeah, it's great. <laughs> so it's really interesting you mentioned like your kind of 9 to 5 job, because that was my 9 to 5 job. Yeah, but, right. Yeah, okay. Well, that's cool. It seems like... People who work in kind of the mental health field end up getting drawn to like music and chip tune and stuff. So yeah, I I absolutely. Why. I think it's a very like it's a very inclusive scene, and I think having that uh, there's a lot of caring people in the chip tune scene. And I yeah, think it, kind of, it kind of goes hand in hand. So yeah, no, that, that's great. Okay, cool. So when did you kind of get started? Like, how old were you, if I may ask? Um, I think it was in. I, think I got started in like 2000. And, Maybe 2009. Okay, so like so fairly it's, like the I decade. Think it's all, almost, uh, yeah, I think in December, no, in October this year, it will be 10 years. Oh, cool. So I should probably do something special for that, maybe. Like but, an uh, anniversary? Like, hey, here's my stuff. Yeah, something like that. Um, it's kind of weird to think about it like that because I've never, uh, I never thought like it would it, go yeah. on for this long, so yeah, interesting. Well, that's cool. Well, like, what would you say is the most exciting thing about this whole journey you've taken? Um, it's it's definitely the definitely getting involved with like the online community of Chip Tune because it's it, it's Chip Tune is it's not really localized anywhere in the world. Yeah. So you know, like any of the like the, the, the metal scene in Sheffield, you know, there's loads of metal bands, but there's mm -hmm. not loads of Chip Tune artists performing. So. Like talking to people online, and then when these trips come up, or I get the opportunity to play somewhere, going there and then meeting all these people yeah. I've never met in person but have spoken to for years. Mm -hmm. I think that's like that's that's the uh, yeah like the icing on the cake for me. Now, I guess here's my question because I've had more contact with people who are like DJs but don't do like chip tune. Do you see like um, I guess a large divide between the communities that are like DJs and then maybe DJs who I don't know how to say, I don't want to be like spin chip tune music <laughs> and then like people who do chip tune, like. Yeah, right. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure. I mean, I do, most of the, the shows that I do around my hometown mm -hmm. are actually, I end up playing with DJs yeah. a lot of the time. Um, I kind of set out my, my live set so it's kind of like seamless and kind of it's got this constant thing and yeah. um, I end up kind of getting thrown in between DJ sets so <laughs> for me I've, I've always kind of been involved with that that side of it as well but mm -hmm. I'd say like maybe most chip tune artists it is a little bit like separated from that mm -hmm. uh, you know from kind of like people who DJ or like make electronic music on a computer 
Yeah. Um, but there's like there's definitely like the crossovers there, and there's like a mutual respect. Okay, so like the audiences are kind of different, but also they kind of there's like a common ground to meet and have a good time. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I, I like to make music that kind of fits. Yeah, has, has, has a nice flow in like a club like yeah. environment. So now, is there any like um, I don't know how to put this one either. I know some chiptune artists like are diehard like they only they have their Game Boy as their mm. like tool to use, and then some artists have kind of. Not graduated, but have decided to choose like a um, workstation. Yeah, for right. Their, for their sounds, are those chip tune artists kind of looked down upon, or like is there? No, I, I I don't think so. I think maybe may, maybe at some point, like a few years ago, there was probably a bit of like a oh, this, you know you got to have this purist kind of yeah. chip tune sound, but I, I don't think that's as much like uh, like talked about anymore. Well, I don't think anyone cares. It's just if, if, people are being creative then well there's also the like the idea that I guess like a lot of the people at least who I know in the states who use like the Game Boys the Game Boys are kind of yeah. fading out because they're not made anymore so yeah right right I think yeah most of the Game Boys that people buy now like get opened up and modified and there's probably there might be a day when there's no like original unmodified Game Boys left so yeah they'd have to figure something out because that's they're gonna get it really expensive. Yeah, like, that's they're right. They're kind of expensive now. You see the Game Boy Color, and like at least where I'm from, it's like a hundred dollars. Yeah, right. Yeah, people people like to jack up the price because they know it is like this retro and mm -hmm. this, is, this is kind of it's a very iconic yeah. design as well, and it's, it reminds people of the childhood. So it's like the nostalgia factor there kind of yeah. pumps up the price, I think. But uh, yeah. okay. Um, another question I have is like, did you ever play any instruments or like kind of do music when you were younger? Yeah, so the first the first instrument that I that I picked up was uh, the ele electric guitar. Okay. Um, st I, yeah, I started learning that for a while, um, but I, I think as soon as I got into electronic music, I, I ended up putting down the guitar yeah. and not really using it as much. Like, I'll play it every now and every now and again. Um, but to be honest, that. Any instrument that's around, and yeah. especially if I'm recording, I'll pick it up and I'll try and make a sound out of it because it's fun, you know. But um, yeah, I, I just kind of all the stuff that I release is is chip tune at the moment, and uh, yeah, I, I don't know what it is about it that makes me want to keep on making it. But uh, yeah, I'm, I just uh, I mean versatile sounds, things like that. It's kind of I don't know. we can go back to nostalgia, like the. Chip tune, I guess, frequencies and stuff, they're fun. Like, yeah, they absolutely. You a time that has gone by, it all, has gone by, but also keeps going forward. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, goodness me, Stardew Valley, like, kind of had, so, I think originally, like, that might have been something they were. Yeah, right. I um, I got a Nintendo Switch recently, actually, and Stardew Valley is, like, one of my favorite games, like, the, the, down to the music and just, like, the style of the gameplay and, like, so uh, that the guy who made the game, I actually got to talk to him. Um, Sebastian is basically like looks just like Eric Baroni who made Stardew Valley. Yeah, right. Okay. And he was like, I did all the music, and I was just like, oh. Amazing. That's so cool. no, like, um, do you have any hopes to try to do like two, two music for games? Um, maybe. I think if the right if the right opportunity came up, mm -hmm. I would love to do something like that. But. Um, as, as I said, I've, I've, I don't really, I've never wanted to do like music as, as a job. Yeah. If the right opportunity came up, I'd, I'd take it, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't really go out of my way to try and write something that specifically for a game that, that somebody wants. If someone liked my music and they had a game that would fit with the style, yeah. then, then sure, but. Okay, so like yeah. right now you don't necessarily do like commissions or anything, you're just kind of like I'd, having fun. Yeah, absolutely. I love making the music that I want to make yeah. um, and there has been the occasion where someone said oh but will you remix this or uh, a label has, has said I like this song can you make more songs like this and I've, I've given it a go but then yeah. it's just like the I'm just not as motivated to do it and it just doesn't feel as, as genuine for me so okay I think you're one of the first people I met that's like well no second person I interviewed someone else today that had like kind of the general same feeling of like I don't want to turn this into a nine to five. Yeah, yeah. So I'd, I think I'd be worried that it just I'd, I'd get bored of making yeah. making chip tune music or, or making the music that I want to make. And I'd, I like that it's 
it's my thing I can do in my spare time, you know, and, and yeah. at my own pace as well, that's quite important to me, so. And I don't know how it is, like, over in the UK, and like, in that area, but <laughs> for the job that you told me you have, you should, sounds like you might have a lot of time off in the States, like, if you work in the mental health field or health field, they te generally tend to give you, like, a lot of days off. Does that does that happen over where you're at? So you can go on tour and be like, hey, I got so yeah, I, I actually only work. Um, I actually only work part time, so okay. 20, twenty four hours a week, um, and I, I do have a lot of I do have a lot of spare time. Yeah. Um, I also have a very good uh, manager who, who. Oh, that's awesome. At my work, so whenever I've got gigs, he'll um, rather than me having to book time off, he'll yeah. just uh, put my shifts around my gigs, which is quite handy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's pretty comfortable. <laughs> I guess that's another reason why a lot of like musicians kind of go into that, or not, not go into that field, but are accidentally in the field and go, hey, I have this time off. I can go yeah, to right. the United States for like a week. Okay. Absolutely. Nice. Well, thanks for this interview. This is no, really you're cool. You're very, like, very you're, welcome. You're very, very welcome. You're pumped. You're like getting music out there, and that's pretty great. Like, yeah, I, I can't wait to play now, actually. <laughs> I'm so you, excited. Like, if we were to go on the internet and be like, hey, where are you at? Where can we find you? Um, just uh, harleylikesmusic.com. Okay. Um, it just links to a band camp page, but it's simple. It's just got my music on there. Okay. And I, I think that's all it needs. So, yeah, check out harleylikesmusic.com, please. All righty. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. This has been Jedi Amanda with Beyond the Game. Thank you.